Hello everyone, Brian from Sewage and Nurse Brewing here and it is Wednesday, July 12th, 2023 and it's time to harvest the bear. So the bear barley is dried out pretty good. Uh, I think under normal circumstances we'd actually want to let it dry out in the field a bit longer but unfortunately we got a lot of rain coming and so I'm a little bit worried about it starting to develop some molds. So I'm going to take it in today uh, before it rains and I'll complete the drying process just in my basement. Next to it, of course, is the Harrington barley. It's not as far along, it's not ready to harvest. And so I'm hoping after this rain, we'll get a good dry patch, which will dry that out and get that ready for harvest. So to harvest, I'm using a fairly simple approach and it's just because I have a small patch. I don't need to do anything fancy. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a pair of garden shears to cut the heads off, which I'll collect into a bucket. I'm then going to put those in a brew in a bag bag down in my basement in front of a fan to dry a little further. And that's going to be it for harvesting the bear. Now, once the rain is gone and I have a bit of free time, I'm going to use a line cutter to cut down the hay that's left over, uh, which we'll use for bedding for the animals. As for the bear, once it's dried out, I will be processing it to remove all of the chaff. Hi, future Brian here. We're going to let uh, past Brian deal with the mistakes he's making right now. Uh, this is not an optimal way to harvest barley. I would not recommend doing this in the future. Just cut it all down, take it to a table, sit down and cut off the heads. It's, it's so much easier on the back than what I'm doing here. But while uh, past Brian harvests the barley, I thought I'd do a little bit of a Q&A because I've had a lot of questions about this project spread out across different social media posts and YouTube and my blog. And so I thought I'd address some of the more common questions that I get to try and, and maybe answer those in a way that's accessible to more people. Uh, so I made a list because there's a lot of them. <clears throat> So uh, I'm going to start off with just questions about how did I prepare uh, the barley breads and grow it. So I've had a few questions on what kind of prep work I did before I planted. Did I use fertilizers or anything like that? And the answer is no. Uh, I dug in some compost and that was it. And the reason for that is barley does not need high nitrogen levels. In fact, it can often struggle with high nitrogen levels. And so because of that, to avoid those kinds of problems, all I did was stir in some compost. Now you might notice in some of my videos that the barley right against the fence is not growing as well as the stuff away from the fence. And that's because we just cut down some pine trees there. The soil's still somewhat acidic. So hopefully that'll improve over the next couple of years. I was also asked sort of how I spaced my rows and my seeds. And so the rows should have been 20 centimeters, which is slightly under a foot apart. And the seeds should have been 16 millimeters apart, which is roughly three quarters of an inch. Now, my rows are too far apart and my seeds are too close together, so things are not optimal. But I did actually try to do something to be a little bit more optimal. And what I did is I actually 3D printed uh, an attempt, at least, at a seed drill. And this was set up to plant one seed every 16 millimeters and to make it easy to space the rows. It works really well for bigger seeds, but it doesn't seem to really work too well with the smaller sparley seeds. So I don't know if I can fix this for next year or if I'll have to try something else. Uh, but an attempt was made, uh, just wasn't very successful. Another thing I was asked is whether I use a fungicide. And where I am here in southwestern Ontario is really not a good place to grow barley. Barley likes fairly dry climates. It's quite humid here. I'm sandwiched between a couple of great lakes. Uh, it often is, you know, 90% plus humidity here, which isn't great for barley. Barley is quite sensitive to a number of different molds and fungi and, and mildews. And the climate here, of course, is perfect for those. And I've been lucky this year. I haven't really had any problems. Hopefully that'll continue if I do this in the future. But I do know some people nearby have had issues with their barley crops. So it is always a little bit of a crapshoot in this area to not use a fungicide. So another question I've gotten is essentially, how did I figure out how to do this? Where did I, I get information on this? Now, I do have a bit of a history with barley growing. I grew up in Western Canada. I was shipped off to my uncle's farms in the summer and a lot of what we were growing was barley. So I got a bit of experience there, but obviously that only translates to a limited extent to malting barley here at home. Now, when I first sort of was seriously considering this, I, I looked at the source that I think most of us would think of, which is the, the malt book um, which is, you know, probably the single best source about malt that we have in the homebrewing world. Uh, unfortunately, while this book talks a lot about malt, it says next to nothing about malting. And it turns out this is actually a really common theme. Uh, unlike the rest of brewing, malting is actually somewhat of a secretive thing. I use some of my connections to get, you know, textbooks that they use in technical schools. 
uh, that are, you know, these are like six, seven hundred dollar textbooks. And even there, they're very vague about the processes, the temperatures and the times used to make malt. Uh, so unfortunately, the resources out there are not fantastic, but there are a couple of good ones. Uh, the best one by far is the YouTube channel Brewing Beer the Hard Way, which is a, a fellow Canadian brewer out west who grows malts and produces, you know, pretty much all of the barley he uses for brewing. He's got lots and lots of videos on everything from, you know, the most basic aspects of malting through to building equipment that can allow you to malt on sort of a medium scale, the sort of thing a home brewer could use to produce all the malt they ever wanted. Wonderful YouTube channel. I'll put a card up here. Can't recommend it enough. And if you want to do something like this, go to that site. He also has a blog, which uh, has some additional information in it. It's worth checking out. I'll put a link to that down in the video description. And he has written a book and his book actually has malt recipes in it. So it's another great place to look for information on how to malt on the home scale. Another great, another great source I found is on Facebook. There is the Home and Professional Maltering Group there. It's not a very active group, um, but if you post a question, you will get an answer. It just might take a couple of days. But the number one thing they have that is absolutely wonderful is their file section. And someone has taken a lot of time to work out malting and kilning schedules for most of the major styles of malt out there. They've put them into two convenient spreadsheets, one for metric and one for imperial units. And I've tried about a quarter of these using feed barley and they've all worked really well. So between Brewing Beer the Hard Way YouTube channel and book and that Facebook group, that's all the information you really need to get started on this. And I think it'll actually take you quite a long ways uh, into the sort of becoming a whole malster. So that kind of leads into a lot of questions about, well, what is my malting setup? And I got to tell you, because this is my first year doing this at any scale, and because I don't know if I'm going to do this again, I don't have a malting setup. What I have is sort of the most janky jury rate system you can imagine. Uh, to soak my malt, I just use a Rubbermaid tub. I put my malt in a Bruna bag bag and just drop it in water. And to do the aeration phase, I just pull the bag out and put it on a rack. And I, that's how I, I soak and aerate the malt. And I just put it on a counter, let it chit and uh, dry it either using a food dehydrator for smaller batches or for larger batches I use my oven. So I don't really have a malting setup. I'm just making do with the stuff I have around the house. But I think the flip side is, is I've had some good success in my little test runs. So it shows you don't really need to make much of an investment if you want to try this yourself. I mean, if you can find a bag of feed barley, you probably have the other things you need between your kitchen and your home brewery to start malting your own barley. Now I will do a, a video on how I malt in the future, uh, but it's gonna be a few months. And the reason for that is the barley I just harvested has something called dormancy. And what that means is the seeds will not germinate until several months after they've been harvested. And the reason for that is perfectly logical. The last thing barley wants to do is drop its seeds on the ground, have a warm day in fall, and have those seeds germinate only to be killed off by winter. It wants its seeds to stay dormant in the ground until the spring. And so the dormancy is just a built-in sort of clock that ensures that if there is a warm day or two in fall, that the seeds don't germinate prematurely. So I have to wait out that dormancy period before I can start malting. But once that's done, I'll give you a, a video or two on how I've been malting. And you'll see just how janky my, my system is. Now the Harrington barley, which is the barley I'll be harvesting in a few weeks, is a modern barley strain. And it does not have a dormancy period. It's been bred to not have that. So I should be able to malt that as soon as it's ready, but I'm just going to wait until the uh, bear is ready, uh, largely because I have to wait on the hops anyways, so why rush the malt? All right, and now for the big question that I've been asked more times than I can shake a stick at, and that is, are you going to get enough barley to actually brew a beer? And I got to tell you, up until today, I was pretty confident I was. Uh, the place I bought my seed from told me that I should get a couple kilos out of what I just planted. Uh, you know, it grew well, everything looked promising, and then I harvested today and weighed things. And, you know, I gotta tell you, that's a pretty good sized bag of malt, but it's actually, if you think, look at it closely, it's, it's mostly bulk from the beard on the barley. This only weighs 1.4 kilos. 
Uh, so that's not near enough to make a batch of beer. And keep in mind, 20% of that is probably the beer to another chaff. I'm gonna be holding a bit of that back for seed for next year. And when you malt, you lose somewhere in the neighborhood of 18% of the weight of the grain as well. So I'm probably looking at about 750 to 800 grams of malt once that's finally processed. That's just shy of two pounds for those of you in the States. So obviously that's not enough. Now hopefully the Harrington will give me a better yield and I'll be able to just mix the two and brew from that. I can of course always use a half size batch to maybe stretch it out a little bit further. But I just recently learned something new that further complicates the scenario. And the thing I learned is this barley here, uh, the bear, which as a reminder, dates back at least 1100 years, if not further, apparently only yields about half of the gravity per weight that modern malts do. So it's, you know, 800 grams potentially of malt, but it's gonna be equivalent to 400 grams or roughly one pound of malt in terms of the actual amount of sugar I'm gonna get out of it. Uh, so we'll see how this pans out. I have a sneaking suspicion I might be having to malt a little bit of feed barley just to uh, bring things up to the, the quantities I require. Uh, but fingers crossed the Harrington maybe gives a little bit better of a yield and I can maybe pull it off just by blending the two. Anyway, so with that, I think that wraps up the Q&A portion of the video and it looks like past Brian is uh, gleaning the last few heads from the field. Uh, so with that, I'm going to say goodbye and we'll see you hopefully within a week when I actually separate the barley from the chaff and get a final weigh in on my bare yield.